All right, y'all, we are back with another video. Shout out to the comment section, man. Uh, this is another great video that y'all said that I need to check out. Now, I'm hearing that Judge Janine went one on one with the great one, Donald Trump. And I'm hearing that he straight exploded on the whole Biden administration. So we're going to check this out. This is what y'all was letting me know. I like, okay, I'm definitely, I definitely need to check this right here out. Like I said, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Shout out to everybody that's been showing so much support to the channel. Everybody that's been leaving positive comments in the comments section. I really, really appreciate it. Like I said, and everybody that just clicked on this video for the first time, I appreciate you as well. Like I said, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and let's see what Donald Trump did, because I'm hearing that he straight exploded on the Biden administration. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into this. We start with my exclusive sit down with President Donald Trump in Florida, where he was in great spirits and as fired up as I've ever seen him. His prediction for the Virginia gubernatorial race, his reaction to Biden's disastrous administration and so much more. Wow. Take a look. Mr. President, thank you so much for having us here at Mar-a-Lago. Thank you. Okay, if there's one word that could sum up the Biden administration, it would be crisis. There's the energy crisis, the supply chain crisis, the COVID crisis. crisis. If you look back on the last 10 months of the Biden administration, what grade would you give them? Well, it's probably the worst presidency in history. I can't imagine. I used to say Jimmy Carter. Uh, not a big fan of Bush getting us into the Middle East, to be honest with you. I think this is, though the worst in the history of our country. If you look wow, at Afghanistan and that worst. horrible thing that happened to our nation with these young people being killed, and by the way, so badly injured, we have over 20, no arms, no legs, nobody ever talks about them. And then to leave $85 billion worth of the best military equipment, brand new, much of it brand new, better than what we have, right out of the box. And, and they didn't explode it. They didn't blow it up like they said. Yeah. They did a couple of old planes that were not very valuable. No, I think that was the worst. And I'll tell you what, it's getting to be pretty close. What's happening on the border is one of the great embarrassments for our country also. Well, so we'll talk about those individually, but what grade would you give the Biden administration? I think you have to say an F. Wow. And not an F plus. It would be an F. It's a failed administration. Oh, 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 it's a disaster. Oh, oh. I've never seen anything like it. And by the way, I wish you'd do well. You know, I love the country more than I love anything. Mm -hmm. Family, God, country, you know, we have to take care of our country. Uh, I would love to see him do well. I don't think there's ever been a greater embarrassment as an administration. And we had everything ready to go. It was, we handed him on a plate whether it was the border or Afghanistan, we were getting out, but we were gonna get out with great dignity and strength. Well, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Biden was sold to us as a guy who understood foreign relations. He was a United States Senator for 36 years. He was on the Foreign Relations Committee. He was a vice president for eight years. He was sold to us as a guy who understood foreign relations. Well, his own Secretary of State, Gates, said very strongly he never made a correct decision in his Dang. life. Now, that was made policy. numerous times by decision numerous people. In his life? But it was made even recently by Gates and others that worked with him. And I think Afghanistan was a disaster. Not getting out. I was the one that set it up. I brought it down to 2,500 soldiers. And we were in great shape. And they weren't going to touch us. They knew they weren't going to touch us. And then he took out the military before he took out the people. He left. He left maybe thousands of people that are Americans sure, and people that should there. be taken out. Why do you think he didn't listen to his military? Well, I think the military is largely discredited. I think our top okay. people in the military are discredited. He, he might see that if he understands it. He might see that. I wanted to get out also. I remember Millie telling me, because I said, I want every screw, every bolt, every nut, mm -hmm. every tank. I want to take the tents, you know, the big tents that hold the equipment and the planes. I want everything out. Getting the planes out, you just fly them into Pakistan and then take them over to our country. So easy. They left everything. But I remember Millie saying, and he told me this, and I, I lost a lot of respect when he said it. Sir, we'll save money if we leave the equipment. I said, save money if we leave a $50 million airplane or a $10 million tank? Dang. You think we're saving money by not take, putting it into a plane or flying it out? 
I said, That's what does what that I'm mean? Saying, like... Sir, it's cheaper to leave it than it is to take them. And I said, that's a fool talking. No, when, I, when Millie <laughs> said that, I lost such respect for him. I said, give it to me again. Tell me again. I want to hear it one more time. And he said that. I really lost a lot of respect for him. We've got a school board controversy that Trump feeds into the Virginia gubernatorial race. But more important is the fact that we are now at a point in American history mm -hmm. where parents are being referred to as domestic terrorists by the National School Board Association. They took it back after, after the outrage. But you've got an attorney general, Merrick Garland, who's ready to deploy national law enforcement to supervise what's going on in local jurisdictions, which is a job for the sheriffs and the local police. And he is doubling down. We heard the hearings this week. I've been watching the school board hearings more closely than I ever have, to be honest. Right. And it's so interesting. Okay. Yeah, the parents is. are incensed. They're not terrorists. They're just people that are so upset. They're angry. They're hurt. They're crying because their children are being taught things that, in our opinion, in my opinion, in a vast majority of the people in this country's opinion, they don't want their children to hear about this stuff. They want to go back to reading, writing, and arithmetic. And they want to hear that black people are good. And they want to hear that white people are good. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the division that's being caused by these programs are, are just terrible. The amazing part of this is the National School Board Association, who drafted this letter, um, ends up Always uh, something uh, the administration boards, promotes the head of that association, gives them a plum job. We now know that there was coordination between the Biden administration and the National School Board Association to get that letter to the attorney general so they could start going after parents. The saddest part of all this is that there was a young girl raped. The school board knew yeah. about it. The superintendent. Uh, Oh my lied God. about it. And now we've got a gubernatorial race in Virginia. It will be a forecast to 2022, the midterms. How do you see Youngkin doing against McAuliffe next well, Tuesday? I think he's going to do very well. Look, McAuliffe made a tremendous mistake. I, but it's really probably not a mistake from his standpoint. He believes it. Right. He said the parents have nothing to do <laughs> with what their children are going to learn. They have nothing to do with it. What? I heard that statement. I said, is that going to be bad? Is that going to be like deplorables? You remember when Hillary made the statement deplorables? It said, that's not a nice word. And it blew up. I think this is going to cause him tremendous problems come Tuesday. Do you think Youngkin's going to win? I think he's a good man. And I think he's a successful man. He loves Virginia. He loves he the win? country. I, I think he should win. I mean, he should win. I'll be honest. My base has to turn out. If my base turns out, he's going to win. And I hope they turn out. I really want them to turn out. It's interesting, don't you think, that they are now referring to Youngkin as a Trump acolyte, using uh, Trump you acolyte. as a way to get the Democrats to come out and vote? Well, I think it backfires because I think that gets the base to come out and vote by doing that, mm -hmm. by hooking me with him mm -hmm. as much. And I know him a little bit, but I really know him as a, a good person. Mm -hmm. You know, the last person that ran as a Republican, did not embrace Trump in Virginia. Right. He got killed. He was just absolutely destroyed. And I think if my base <laughs> so doesn't come out, he can't bro. win. Do you see I think my base has to come out very strongly. Do you see yourself as a kingpin for elections going forward? Well, something has happened, and this is not from an egotistical standpoint. Yeah. It's a great okay. honor, because it's never question. happened before to anybody. If I endorse somebody, they win. If I endorse somebody, they win. I think I'm 148 and two. That's a pretty good number. You Trump is setting it out there right now. And I did now. endorse Youngkin, it out there. And we're going to see. I hope it's not going to be three. <laughs> okay? Do you understand that? Yeah. I did. I endorse him strongly. He's a good man. He wants mm -hmm. to do the right job. He's a sane person. These people are insane. Let's talk about inflation. You talked about how you left this country in great shape. We now have inflation of 5.4%. Now the prices of beef are up 17.6%. The average American family spending an extra $175 a month. Gas prices are up to $7 in California, $5 in New York. Man, gas we can't prices. afford these people. And Joe Biden, <laughs> when he was asked about gas prices, what he's going to do about it, he what says, I don't see uh, anything that it's going to reduce, uh, significantly reduce gas prices in Incredible. the near future. Incredible. He doesn't Water. know. No, it's, uh, he doesn't have any idea. Look, golly. one of the things I was most proud about, <laughs> our country became energy independent. We didn't need the Middle East. We didn't need right. Russia. We didn't need anybody. We had our own. We had more than them. 
we were number one by far over yep. Saudi Arabia and, and you know this and Russia. Yep. Number one by far. I had the pipelines going, Keystone XL pipeline. Mm -hmm. Amazingly, I ended the Russian pipeline. I was not good to Russia. I got along well with Russia. I got along well with Putin. But they weren't happy with Trump. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. But Biden opened up this big, massive pipeline all over Europe, but he closed down the XL. And I have to say, because you heard it a thousand times. Yeah. More importantly, we're energy independent yeah. no longer. I was so proud of that. First time really in history that, you know, they say 75 years, but I don't believe we it were ever big. energy independent. It was and big. We were energy independent. It really independent. was, though. We were doing Judge so much. Right. The, the prices, it was $1.87 a gallon, okay? If you look at, you look at the numbers. The crazy. And now, yesterday, they had, in a certain section of California, $7.70. Mm -hmm. It's always the lead. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to follow, and it's going to go a lot higher than that. And Biden sent people to go see Russia, Saudi Arabia, and other members of OPEC that we need help because we don't have enough. Now, when you talk about inflation, the biggest factor, in my opinion, is no energy. The trucks, mm -hmm. the factories, everything, yep. the deliveries, the planes, everything. It's so energy-based that the energy now is so expensive to get. We don't have enough oil. You know, I filled up the strategic reserves right. for almost nothing. When oil hit bottom, we, had, we were almost empty with the reserves, and nobody thought of it. I said, you know, this would be a great time to fill it up. We'll buy it cheap. I never got credit. I don't think anybody's ever mentioned it. But I bought 75 million barrels, I believe it was. 75 million barrels, which is a massive order. It, it is. It was good for two things. 75 million. Uh, the prices million. got so low that it was hurting our energy jobs. And we bought it cheap as hell. And it's, now he wants to use that that energy, that oil that I bought at a great price that should be used in cases of emergency, mm -hmm. he wants to now drain it yeah. so that the prices come down. But he, even he said it'll save us about 18 cents a gallon. Now, first thing I want to say, y'all, is shout out to Judge Janine. She's doing a great job because normally when, especially when Trump go to CNN, the man can barely even get, uh, get a whole sentence out and he get interrupted. I love the fact that Judge Janine is asking Donald Trump questions and he's able to give an answer without being interrupted, uh, you know, without being cut off and stuff like that. And, and that's why I've been so focused into this interview because she can ask her questions. He give her an answer. He get done talking. She asks another question. And I love that because you get to hear what she have to say. You get to hear what Trump have to say. Now, you see Trump got on uh, Biden about these them, these gas prices and stuff like that. He's just a man in the office that just don't know what he's doing. Gas prices is so freaking high, man. That was so high. And you notice when Trump was in the office, we didn't have like problems with gas prices like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but like right now, and then another thing is that uh, Trump gave Biden a F. He said, I don't even want to give him an F plus. I'm going to give him an F. He's the worst president ever. I'm like, wow. So, and, uh, and like I said before, y'all, I'm going to continue to say this, whether people like it or not. The only reason I feel like Joe Biden won is because everybody, the media itself, was paying Donald Trump as a racist. That's the only reason that me personally, I feel like Joe Biden won because everybody tried to paint Donald Trump as a racist and the man is not racist at all. And that's the only reason that Joe Biden won. But, man, like I said, y'all let me know what y'all think, though. But uh, so far, like I said, I'm loving this interview. I'm loving the back and forth. It ain't nobody arguing. Ain't nobody cutting nobody off. They able to talk and stuff like that, peacefully, calm, and collective. And I love it. Let's keep it going. Uh, it's not 18 cents. No, he doesn't. No it, no, it would save. We could. I could get that down within six months. I'll bet you I could get it down to $2, $2.50. Look at that. It's going to be... Well, Over doesn't, $10. doesn't he know how to do it? I, well, I don't think he does because his answer was weird. You can get it down a few cents. A few cents, no. You get it down many dollars. How do you yeah. do that? You have to let the, let the oil companies go back to work. They ended leases. They ended Anwar because of Lisa Murkowski, who's done a terrible job. In Alaska. She's not a Republican. She says she's a yeah. Republican in Alaska. 
Biden, you need to be listening. Trump trying to tell you how to lower gas prices. But obviously, we all know Biden ain't going to listen at all. Ronald Reagan tried to get it. Bush has tried. Everybody tried to get it. I got it done. It was all done. Maybe it's bigger than Saudi Arabia. Okay, maybe. They've tried for many, many decades to get it done. I got it done. This would have added to our supply. We're already the biggest in the world by far. Now we're not the biggest in the world anymore. We've ended all the leases on government lands that, frankly, were pumping out for years and not hurting it, done in an environmental way. And if you look at natural gas, natural gas is very clean. We got mm -hmm. windmills destroying our landscapes, killing all the birds. And not necessarily The energy effective. is so expensive. And right. you know where the turbines are made? Every one of them. China. Germany and China. Still ahead, what Donald Trump thinks of Biden and the Dems vaccine mandates. Oh. Plus, his take on the latest caravan heading towards the southern border and how it can be stopped. Back in a moment. Wow, I love to hear that. Welcome back to Justice. We return now to my exclusive interview with President Donald Trump, covering everything from Dr. Fauci to the latest migrant caravan headed our way. Take a look. Let's talk about um, what's going on in this country with the firing of police officers, firemen, nurses, the mm -hmm. ones who were our heroes. They were on billboards yeah. all over the country. And now what we've got are, you know, we're talking about vaccinating kids who were five years old to 12 years old and then forcing them to continue to wear masks. Um, our heroes are being fired. They're losing their jobs. Are you sorry you didn't fire Anthony Fauci? Well, it's not because of him they're losing their job. It's because of some bad policies that are being made by the Biden administration. But look, if you look at my relationship Biden with Fauci, first of all, he's been there up. like for 40 years. So yeah. you walk in and, you know, he goes, hi, my name's Tony. Oh, great. Hi, Tony. How you doing? <laughs> but everything he told me to, you know, suggested that we do, I didn't do. I went the opposite. He wanted to keep China open. I closed it to China. We would have lost. Fauci wanted to keep China open? Oh, yeah, for a long time. And he actually said President Trump saved thousands and thousands of lives. I was the only one. I was sitting in a room with many, many people. I said, we have to close it to China. I then closed it to Europe because I saw what was going on in Europe. And we saved thousands of lives. And what I did do, and we won freedom, and mm -hmm. we won all of this, and this was a great achievement, though, worldwide, because I think you would have had a 1917 like the Spanish flu where 100 million and maybe 100 million people right. died. I got the vaccine done, yep. three vaccines right. in less than nine months. They said it was going to take five years and it I probably wouldn't that. get done. I got them I done. I remember that. And they do work and they're great. I'm very proud of them. But people shouldn't be forced to take them. You must have seen this week is this character. Now, I do like that answer that Trump just said. He said he glad that he got the vaccine, but people shouldn't be forced to take them because I've noticed a lot of people was always complaining about like uh, their jobs and stuff like that, threatening them type of, hey, if you don't take this vaccine, you can't work here and stuff like that. So it, it's kind of like how these, I, I can't stand that a lot of these jobs do that. They try to force you to put something in your body that you don't want in there. And if you don't do it, it going to cost you your job. You know what I, me personally, what I would say, I would like, you know what, F this job. My life is more important. If I don't want to take something, if I don't want to put something in my body, I'm not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? So if this is how y'all feel, y'all can have this job. I'll go somewhere else. You know, but I've noticed a lot of people were saying that, that these jobs were trying to force people, not asking them, trying to force them to take vaccine. And you can't try to force somebody to put something in a body that they don't want. Caravan is coming the through biggest from, anyone's ever seen. Yeah, yet. more than Del Rio. Okay, this caravan that's coming up now is actually fighting with the Mexican National Guard, forcing their way through. How do we stop this? And when they get here, what do Americans do? They're here. So the wall would have stopped them. So what, the only thing they can do is to go. They're letting them in. I, I know. The wall would have stopped them. The only thing they can do is go to small areas where the wall was going to be completed over the next month. I mean, it would have been completed almost immediately. They just had to finish it. But now... Okay, before we start that, let me just tell you, these are rough people. They were going through the Mexican police, who are tough. They're tough police. They were lined up. They thought they could stop them. You look at that front few lines of the people there on this, on this caravan, a name I came up with, because I saw some caravans, but they were 
tiny, and we ended it. We stopped the caravans. We made sure. Now what's happened is they're talking about one caravan, 120,000 people are going to be for 100. That's like that's like an army. It is. If you look at that front <laughs> line, they look like they belong in the NFL. Golly. In fact, they should be signed, some of them, for the NFL. You look at, they burst through tough Mexican police who tried to stop them. They, they had no chance. We have to stop them. We can stop them, but we have to get very tough. But we cannot let, our country is being poisoned. It's being poisoned. And you know what else? It's being poisoned also with drugs. We had fentanyl, fentanyl. down to the lowest number since its founding, because fentanyl, yeah. if you look, it's worse than anything. It's it the worst. It it's a killer. Much of it's made in China, and I had him just about stopped. I said, look, we're not doing any business if you're going to. All of a sudden, they're making fentanyl like crazy. They're sending it through the border. The numbers on fentanyl have gone up tenfold. I had it not, not stopped, but I had it almost stopped. When we would have had the wall completed and a couple of other things, I would have had it down to, to almost nothing. The fentanyl and drugs generally are pouring through our border. People that are very sick are yes. coming into our country. Very contagious diseases, many oh. different diseases, many. not just COVID. By the way, COVID Man. is peanuts compared to some of these diseases. They're pouring through our country. They are destroying these these leaders. Wow, he said COVID is peanuts compared to these diseases and stuff like that. That oh. Man, I'm telling you, one thing about Trump, Trump is an excellent talker. He is an excellent talking. That's what I do like about him, man. He can like get his stuff out like that, like really like fumbling a lot of forgetting about what he's saying and stuff like that. Like, and that's the thing about it. that's how you can kind of learn more, especially from a president, especially from somebody like Trump, man. If you call them leaders, they're destroying our country. Well, and and the saddest part of it is they're here. Mm -hmm. And if it's 1.7 million that we've counted, you can, I, I imagine it's just as many who got through it who were runaways. You can multiply times seven. Right. I don't know if you know that number. So if they have 1.7, they say you multiply times seven. That's the number that come in unchecked, totally unchecked. Really? And the other thing, so you're talking about, you're talking about tens of millions of people over a relatively short period of time. Mm -hmm. Over a two-year period of time, we would have more than 10 million people coming into our country. Our country can never be the same. Right. Our country is changed already. Do you have a plan to go to the border to boost morale there? Well, I've gone to the border many times. I mean, I don't... Are you going again? Well, I just got back. I was there recently. Okay. Uh, I saw what Biden said. He was there sometime, but he yeah, wasn't there. Yeah, 2008, but he, he, was, yeah. he wasn't there. I don't think yeah, he, he was even there. he said he doesn't have time. No, I've been to the border many times. I don't think it helps for me at this moment to go. I'm not the president. He's the president. He's got to go to the border. The Border Patrol people are incredible. Basically, okay? Biden, when I was uh, there a few months ago, he ain't gonna go. like three months ago, they're so incredible. ICE people, so, and they're tough people. They have to be tough they people. Have to be. They You're love right. our country. You know, they really want to do their job. That's the amazing thing. It would be easier if they didn't. They want to do their job. They're tough people, but they're great patriots. And they're being treated with tremendous disrespect. Still ahead, President Trump responds to wow. the escalating crime surge in America. Plus, he has a message for Hunter Biden that you don't want to miss. My favorite subject. Go ahead. Crime. They are trying to defund the police, demoralize the police. They're now firing police. Mm. Uh, you know, we've got shocking headlines uh, from everything and Biden releasing a gender equity plan to make sure that women are released, uh, eliminating cash bail and all kinds of crimes. Uh, and two San Francisco prosecutors have quit. Chesa Boudin is the DA there. Right. I just want to take one second and I want to read this one case. Well, they to quit you. in protest because they say what's going on yeah, over here. Yeah, Sorry, because he's not making arrests, but he's yeah. letting people out. But in one case, a man charged with robbery, eight prior felony convictions, was released early by the DA, Chesa Boudin, in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's playground. He's then arrested four more times for other crimes, but the district attorney's office never charged him. Nine months after he was set free, he hit and killed two women wow. while driving drunk mm -hmm. in a stolen car. This is America today. Oh. What can we do about well, this? This is America today. It's only going to get worse. So because you is. have all of these millions of people. Many of them are, 
are the worst people. The worst people. Somebody would say, oh, that's not a nice thing to say. Some of these people are but the it's absolute true, though. worst the people. The DAs are, true. are the worst. They don't. All they want to do is indict Republicans. That's all they do. They want to go after Republicans. They use the DAs, the attorney generals, and the federal government. Now, sometimes you have fair people, sometimes you don't. They're good at destroying Republicans. They're horrible at destroying crime. They're letting these people that are killers go out. You look at Chicago, you look, look at New York, what's gone on with the crime in New York. New York is like a different place. Here's the good news. It could be changed, okay? You know, otherwise it would be so sad. You wouldn't even want to talk about it. But what's mm -hmm. happened Tell in New you. York, de Blasio is the worst mayor. It's filthy dirty. People are living on Park Avenue. They're living in tents on in the most incredible streets where people come from all over the world and they pay tax, and which gives our police the money. They have to refund the police. They have to give the police more money. Mm -hmm. But what's happening in New York and what's happening in Chicago, where 88 people were shot last month and six I died. I don't even know how only six died. 88 people were shot. Mm. You look at a weekend they had a little while ago where they had a weekend, a Labor Day weekend, where many people were shot. Let's talk about Hunter Biden and his special counsel. This week, Merrick Garland was asked again. That is crazy, though. 88 people got shot, but only six killed. Like, that. that's, man. And I, and I do know that Chicago is like... I ain't going to say it's one of the worst places to be at, but, man, Chicago has a lot of crimes, man. Oh, my God. It's like every time you turn around, it's something. Somebody then got shot. Somebody then got killed. Every time you turn around, it's wild out here, y'all. About whether or not he would appoint a special counsel to investigate Hunter Biden. Again, Hunter Biden, who couldn't get his art, so called art, listed in any gallery until his father became president, now selling at the same prices as a Monet or a Degas. Yeah. No special counsel. That's no, look, gotta eat look, it. I think Jim. that's the least of it. But the art, art, the art is so terrible. So he's getting a half a million dollars a painting. Right. And I was seeing that a Monet. It was getting less, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such a terrible situation. And we're not going to learn who the buyers are. Should I buy one? But isn't It'll Hunter give me great Biden, access to the White but House. Is, they say that, they, that there's, a, there's a wall. They have no idea. But there are people who are actually coming to the uh, exhibits. So, right. <laughs> first of all, the concept of it is ridiculous. And you said it couldn't get in the past. I don't think he ever painted before. I think he just started. So he's <laughs> learning by the numbers. And, and let me tell you, I believe oh, that as bad as that is, it's, it's peanuts compared to other things, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. so obviously horrible. I've had people say that's a terrible thing. That is a terrible thing, what's going on. And they're getting numbers like nobody has ever gotten. A lot of money yeah, following nobody's it. Gotten. In fact, I'm thinking about opening up my own gallery. You I'm are. giving it, yeah, I'm going to How much do, are you going to charge? I think a couple of million dollars of painting. Yeah. If he gets 500 Who are you going to paint? I'll paint whatever the hell I have to paint <laughs> to get $2 million. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you so much for having us here at this beautiful uh, Mar-a-Lago, and thank, thank you. you for taking the time for us. Thank you, Janine. Thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity wow, here. Hey, man. Clip You heard Trump, Trump say, thank you, Janine. And like I said, we know that... Uh, that uh, Judge Janine is a huge advocate like for Donald Trump and stuff like that, and she should be. It's a good it's a good man. Stuff like that. I loved a lot of the answers that Trump was making. He was letting you know about the Biden administration, about Hunter Biden, about the wall, about like, I mean, a whole lot of stuff all compiled into this one video. That's why I said I, uh, I feel like you're never too old to sit down, listen, learn. And just listen to like what's going on. I feel like it was a great interview. Like I stated before, y'all heard when I said that I love the way that uh, they can uh, have a like a great, great conversation without the yelling, the hollering, the cutting people off. Judge Janine was able to say whatever she wants. Trump didn't cut off. Trump was able to just do his thing, say everything he had to say that was on his mind. Judge Janine didn't cut him off. This is what you call a great, great interview. Now, when Trump went to CNN, that woman, I forgot her name. I know she was like the host, the host there or whatever the case may be. But the, I think she was like a moderator or something like that. But she would not let Trump talk. Every time she asked a question, he get to talking. She cuts him off. 
And, you know, it, it, it was crazy. So that's why I said I absolutely love this interview. Y'all let me know down below um, what y'all thought about it and uh, what y'all took from it and stuff like that. But, man, Trump straight went off on the Biden administration, man. But like I said, I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.